Matthew 7.13 Still in the Sermon on the Mount. Now what we're going to look at today is we're in Matthew, Jewish book, but this is true for any age. Enter ye in a straight gate. Now, there are things in the Bible that people take literal and they're not to be literal. Okay, Jesus said, I'm, I'm the door. Uh, you don't walk up to him, he's a wooden thing with a doorknob. And, you know, the Catholics have got the drawing, you know, the pearly gates and Peter's there at the checkout. Or check-in, whatever. There is no gate of salvation. It is a symbolic to tell you, and you know what a gate is, you go in and out of a gate. And there are, there are things where they take literal, and you ought not to take literal. Like the Catholics and the Lutherans, well, Jesus said, take my body and, and drink my blood. They take it literal, even though in the same chapter, Jesus said it was symbolic. And you got to wisely adopt yourself to the Bible, to the truth. Jesus told the people, well, God told the people, Jesus is God, go to Bethel and transgress. Do you? Come on, you want a Bible word? Come on, Pastor. We're, we're, we're going to go to the Holy Land. Can we go to Bethel and transgress? The Bible says it. That is it. God's being sarcastic. He's telling you sarcastically what the people are doing. Now, salvation is not a gate. But we know what a gate is. It's an entrance. My people are sheep. And you go to the church, there's a bunch of sheep there mowing on the grass. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, we would say Broadway. Majority in America, your Broadway is, is, is in the place of the city of theaters, movies, entertainment. The church aisle, the church today has become the Broadway, giving up the straight and narrow way. Broadway is it's, it's a wide road. It's a highway. And they got a song, Highway to Heaven. It's not a highway to heaven. It's a highway to hell. You see how David, uh, David the devil got you fooled? Highway to Heaven is not, and it was a television program. Highway to Heaven. It's not the highway. The highway, the Broadway, that leads us to destruction. Hell. Hell is destruction of all those who disobeyed God in the dispensation they were in. There is nothing, nothing, but your body and your soul as you're burning later in the lake of fire for all eternity. You don't even have a drop of water. You could be, the, I don't know who the most, most million billionaire is today. And I could imagine that that person, he or she, whoever that person is, I, I can imagine he's got cars and boats and mansions and vacations. I, I can imagine he's got it all. And silver and gold. And if that person dies without Jesus Christ. That's it. He don't take it with him. Look at the Pharaoh. And 
And many there, many, get the many, 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 many there be that go there at. Many go the broad way to destruction, Jesus said. So somebody would come up to you. I have not heard this, but, you know, I've been instructed by good men of the Bible, good men of the Lord, that there are religions, there are people out there. Uh, the Catholics kind of have a thing where everybody's going to go to heaven eventually. Even the non-Catholics, they're just going to burn a little longer in, the, in purgatory. When all the Catholics are out of purgatory, then, you know, the non-Catholics and then, you know, whoever the loving Pope, loving, we're going to let them out and into heaven. But Jesus said, Jesus, the one who made hell, says many will go that way. Because straight is the gate. Again, is now this gate is the door, which is Jesus talking to the sheep that he will say in John chapter 10. I am the door. Well, not really, Jesus. Okay. Oh, oh, no, not to be taken literal. You are the entrance. You are the means. Oh, I understand that now. I mean, when, when Jesus told Peter and Andrew, come and be fishers of men, I mean, did, did they go gathering fish for everybody? They did a terrible job when they had to go take two fish from the little boy. So see, the Bible is, you got to read, all right, who's it written to? Hebrews, church, unsaved world, or everybody. Who is the author? Who is doing the speaking? What is the subject? What is the content? Now you got to ask yourself a question. All right, the statement I just read. Do I take it literal or do I take it figurative? And where the Bible says and you go opposite, you're in great you're in great danger. Because the Bible says, to study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be changed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Rightly divine is okay, that's figurative. God has given me an illustration. Now here's one. And all right, you may say it's bigger, but it says in the millennium the trees are going to clap their hands. There could be a possibility that the trees will clap at Jesus. The book of Revelation says that uh, there's a point in time that all the animals in the sea, on the sea, over the sea, on land, in the air, are going to speak to glorify God. Does that mean Fido? That means Fido. All right. And this is where scholars have problems with the Bible. Did Balaam's ass talk? Or was Balaam having a dream or too much intoxication? Some people say, oh, that's figurative. I say it's true. That, that ass, I said Balaam, that ass spoke. And from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, you got to look at, all right, here's another dilemma. Is it figurative? Is it exact? And then you got to look at the religions, and then you got to look at scholarships, Baptist seminaries, and how they view it. And primarily what the scholars and what religions say, usually it's completely opposite what the Bible says. Now we know, because watch, Scripture with Scripture, John 14. Don't go there, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way. All right, so we have a broad is the way, we have narrow is the way, very, very 
short path, which leadeth unto life. Now look, there's the way, there's the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. All right, we can apply that to Matthew 7, 14. There would be no injustice. That would fit. So the minority of, of the world today is not the colored man. It's the Bible-believing Christian. Born again. The absolute minority is the one that believes the King James Bible, trying to serve the God by the King James Bible, takes the gospel, not abortion, not sodomity, takes it to the street and preaches that. And is interested in getting people saved, not getting them into church. And then once they get saved, get them in the church and help them to grow. We got an aspect today. Bring them in, bring them in. Well, uh, Pastor, yeah. Where's Joe? Well, he left. He didn't say anything? No, no. How come when the one sheep leaves the 90 and 9, we don't go after him and we take it, you know, we go out and get the lost? Wait a minute, there's no lost sheep. You know, you go out and get that one lost man. No, no, no. Lost men in the Bible are goats, not sheep. He goes out and rescues that one sheep. And when you go, okay, you want to go Old Testament, you, you go where the pastors have not helped the flock, have not healed them, have not fed them. Has not given them their meat, but you, you stripped them of their meat. You stripped them of their wool. I'm going way off. Few there be that find it. All right, what did it say in verse 13? Many go to destruction. Few go the straight gate. Few will go to Jesus. I read again today. I see every once in a while this guy will post on Facebook. You know, we got 16 say, and then last week got 20 say, and you got the week before you 14 say, and then you got 8 say, and they're baptized and all that. I'm saying myself. What is your definition of salvation? Because I very, very well, and I don't know, but I very well don't believe that kind of salvation has happened in America today. Chinese, Koreans, the island nations, maybe the Ukraine and Russia with all the problems going on there today. Maybe they're getting saved by the groves. But, I don't know, with Mississippi and Florida, Here's a bottle of water for Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is that a prayer? Whoa. Glory to God. Mark that one down the box. That's not salvation. We're going to sing 46 stanzas of Just I Am. And you got a bunch of teenagers in the back row saying, Hey, listen, last week I went up. When you go up, do something at that altar so the pastor will end all this and we can go home? Okay, no problem. You got it next week, Fred. No problem. I have heard dedicated, well-known preachers tell me that story. Real salvation is the few. While many go to hell, you can't say everybody's going to get saved because they will run to the parable of the sower. He's got four different fields out there. Now don't say the guy who gets tangled in the world, don't say he didn't get saved because the Bible says he received the word. If you receive and believe the word, that's salvation. Now what you do after it. 
We're looking at salvation. We're looking, all right, here is Jesus Christ. He's the door. What do you do with that door? I have brought my dad to Jesus many times. And a man named Joe I met later on, a witness to my family. We have brought my dad to the door. Here is Jesus. There is no other, no other way. And you know, he I, don't, I couldn't believe he actually believed in evolution. And you know, evolution, I got, you know, I don't know, no, I don't know. And I believe he died, and talking to others, he died and went to hell. He, told, he said, I'm going to go to Broadway. I'm going to go with the money, I'm going to go with the women, I'm going to go with the fame, I'm going to go, go that way. My father-in-law, we witnessed to him after the death of, of his wife, fight him out to the church one time. You know, I didn't come on out to church with us, Wally. You know, your wife just died. and Be with the family. We go to church and then can come with us. We got this special preacher. He came out. He preached about Jesus. They preached about salvation. He went up to the altar. And I helped lead him to Christ. I got saved. I only went to church to shut my grandmother out. I didn't want to hear no door. I didn't want to hear nothing. I'll go to church. And I said, not that I go to church. You just blankety blank leave me alone. And don't ever say anything again. I went to church and I don't even know what the message I heard. The, man, the, the, the door creeped open. And I'm going through the week and it creeped even more open. And Saturday opened up and I don't want to go to hell. And was at the rapture of the church. Here's the truth. There are three truths of the rapture of the church. Number one, you will see people. Ah, okay. Okay. He saved right there, right there you go. You will not see people who you thought were saved at the rapture. They won't. Where's the. Oh, there, where's the pastor? Where's the. Where's that family that sat in front of me? Where's that cocky guy that I work with? Oh, I'm a Christian. Where are they? They're not there. And then number three, at the rapture, there are going to be people at the rapture in the clouds, and you're going to be like, you? You are here? Uh, Jesus, no, no loss of judgment. He's here. I know. When you came to the door of Jesus, what did you do? Did you go in? Few. Did you walk away? Many. And just because you say you're a Christian, doesn't mean you come to the gate and walk through. You can preach that message 13, 14 on the streets. I have. You can give that verse to an unsaved Gentile. And they can believe that verse and be saved and go to heaven. Beware. Uh oh. You would think when God says beware. I mean, what do you do as a, as a Jehovah Witness? When Jesus is not God and he comes up to you and says, Beware. What? Oh, yeah. you know, as a kid growing up, there were warning signs, there were beware signs, danger signs. I'm trying to think. And as a child, some of them, you know, that was a challenge to a 10 year old, to an 11 year old, and 13 year old child. Oh. <laughs> I 
I mean, there have been a few times growing up, New London Police, little boy, can't you read the sign? Yes. What's the sign say? Danger. What's that mean? I don't care. <laughs> Nothing happened to me. That's what the world is. And that's the kind of attitude you're going to get. Uh, you know, Jesus, he's any other man. How about the fact is that Jesus is God, and when he says, beware, you got Baptist churches, whether they are the Sunday school teachers, whether they are the pastors themselves, or, uh, who are in that church, missionaries, evangelists, they may not be false prophets, but they're false teachers. You want me to give you some names? You want me to give you a name where a guy said, you know, there's only one gospel in the Bible. And he got upset with me when I showed them in the concordance all the places for gospel. Well, you know, when the priest went into the most holy place, they had a rope tied around them. And I opened up my Bible and said, look, here it is. Here is the garments of the high priest. Tell me where there's a rope. And he goes, look, right there. I looked down like, whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa, let me check this out. I says, excuse me, sir, that's R-O-B-E. That's a rope. Don't tell me your Bible is an R-O-P-E. Well, that's what I was told by men. Oh, what did God tell you? Now, see, he said, that's what men told me. That's, that's what happens when you put Jesus as just a man. Now, when God says it, when Jesus said it, you, can, you know, when you walk up to a Christian, any Christian, even me, you know, Jesus said, eh, okay, stop in my tracks, stop, drop, and pray. Beware of false prophets. There are still false prophets running around. The Bible's not complete yet. I mean, you still got the books. Of, Paul hasn't been saved. Okay? When, once the Bible is closed and sealed, now we have false teachers. And we kind of have false prophets. But what they're doing, most of them do is just taking the Bible out of context. You know, we are in the signs of time. Tell me when the when the church is supposed to be looking for signs. We're not looking for signs, we're looking for a trumpet. Well, didn't you didn't you that earthquake? There have been earthquakes always since God made the earth. The sciences today. Now they're the false prophets. You know, we're supposed to be worrying about the mega killing asteroid. I forget what it is. I haven't seen a killer wasp yet. You owe me a killer wasp. And all the things I've been through, the end of the world, Y2K, uh, COVID-19, and the shot I got, and I got the booster. I was supposed to turn into a zombie and, you know, want eat brains, whatever stupid thing is. That in Florida, I forget it's Orlando somewhere. There's a store to sell you goods for the apocalypse of the zombies. There are people making zombie apocalypse vehicles and, and underground bunkers. I forget what government agency said that, that, that to them the, the zombie apocalypse is a real good threat. Now, if you want to talk asteroids, all right, when I hear an asteroid and its name is Wormwood, I'm going to be real pleased. Because if they say, hey, you know, this asteroid, Wormwood, is coming, <laughs> that means I'm going. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I get in the book of Revelation, oh, is there a date for that? Is there a date for that wormwood? Yes. All right. It's coming. When do you guys say it's coming? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's trick photography. 
We're, we're talking about false prophets, but this is okay. We're going back to UFOs. We're going back to Bigfoot again. We're going back to these weird creatures. I don't know. I don't know. Photoshopping shopping on. I don't know. This woman is taking the pictures now, and I, she put a camera up to find out who was killing her chickens, and they got this weird. They even got a name for it. But you can't believe in satire, the goat man, in the Bible, and you can't believe the unicorns in the Bible. Listen, with mankind, if I was Bigfoot, I'd stay away from man myself, too. Okay? We're all going to die when, when, when that fingernail or crack of that glacier falls. This is the President of the United States. I order all my submarines, non-nuclear missiles, aim them for that glacier. Each of my submarines, 12 of your missiles aim for that glacier. Let that baby fall and let's see if the oceans go two feet. Over and out. Come on, let's see it. Let's try it out. Okay. I don't need to worry because God said he ain't going to drug... He ain't gonna try it. He ain't gonna try. It. He ain't gonna flood the whole world out again like he did Noah's day. Now there will be floods, okay? Maybe Daytona Beach or Florida or or uh, 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 Tampa Bay. Maybe they'll go underwater. Lucia County. Okay, that's fine. That's not worldwide. I mean, the Mississippi's drying up. They go. They got river bolts there that sunk. Hey, look at that. Check it out. You know how many years they've been saying California is supposed to go right off in the ocean? Uh, Yellowstone is supposed to be this volcano? Beware of false prophets. They're going to say, they're going to do, they're going to, uh, we're supposed to get worried. We're supposed to, the, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. And I hope it's rain. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. They look and act. Are you ready? Are you ready? Who's, who is he talking to? They come in sheep's clothing. That means they come impersonating Jews. There are tons of people out there, especially of the black race, that will perform themselves to be the Jewish people. Sammy Davis Jr. was one of them. I don't know how much of England, but England professes to be where of either Manassas or Ephraim. They left the tribe and the, the stone that we, all the kings and queens, I forget the name of it, that, that, that stone is from the, the tribe of Joseph. The Mormons pro proclaim to be the Gentile Jews. The Catholic Church proclaims to be Gentile Jewish. Re replacement theology, God's all finished with Israel. We're the Jews. We're God's loving great promise. Now, nowhere, he say with John chapter 10, he says, other sheep. All right, that can be the church. One reference to to the church being sheep. Every other reference is to Israel, Old Testament, Gospels. They're going to come to you looking and acting like Jews. I would swear if God sends 144 out, 144,000 out, 
I would believe that the devil has sent his out, and they're called Jehovah Witnesses. And they go around, oh, we got the word of God, and, and completely deny who Jesus is, and go check out what John says in 1 John, 2 John. Calls them the Antichrist. Plural. But inwardly they are raving wolves. You know, I get a Jehovah Witness angry. Quote to them John 10 30 over and over and over and over. Quote to them, Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Well, what? Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Wait, we got Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Well, let me open up. Thomas said, My Lord, my God. Thomas said, My Lord. Oh, that's not what Thomas said. My keep, just keep, just keep, just keep saying. You're going to tick them off. I had one one time, they invited me to their, to their, their uh, fellowship hall and all that. Man, you lucky. You know, I was going to take that ticket. I was going to run. He ripped it out of my hand when, by the time he left. I had one so mad at me, I was witnessing to his little boy. Hey, don't you talk to my... Hey, listen, you're the one who came on my property. I went to what I call their compounds in school or something like that. I don't know what it is. Jehovah Witness Meeting of all Florida or something like that. I was there with signs and preaching to them. And I swear to you, it's on video on my website. They threatened to call the cops on me. The closer I walked to their front gate, the closer they said, we're going to call the cops. I said, really? I've never threatened to call the cops on you guys when you came to my house. I whine and dine on you. And it should call it fake cheap food. All right, there are false teachers in the church. And they are people come in professing to be Christians and they're not. When I was first saved, the church I was in, they had this, this, this insurance company. You would go to class. The guy was, was, was a professing Christian that ran the whole thing. You would sit in the class. You would learn the terminology. You would learn the ways of the Baptist church and the Baptist people. So you can come into the Baptist church, not be saved, talk the lingo, and deceive the people to sell them insurance. That's only really one thing my pastor, that the pastor I'm talking about, ever really did anything right is he drove them out. I got sheep to come up to me. Well, you know, you should really vote. Here, here's the voting things. Here's what this man believes. Here's what that man believes. I'm like, <laughs> please, Lord God, do not have them ask me what my view is on voting. And I take their information. I say, my husband, once I get home, shredder time. You know how many times I've shredded Donald Trump? You, know, you ought not vote for somebody who's going to kill babies and all that. You ought not vote for somebody who says that if you, if you are a convicted murderer, you stay in jail for the rest of your life. You ought not to vote for somebody who's not faithful to their spouse. Donald Trump, three times divorced. And while he was divorced on times, he was having an affair with the one he's married with right now. You ought to have somebody get in the White House that pays his bill. Donald Trump's businesses went bankrupt six times. Oh. And I didn't say, well, you're for Biden. You mean the guy's for abortion? The Roman Catholic's not even a Roman Catholic? At least I was a good Roman Catholic. The Pope's running around. Biden, don't say you're a Catholic. Please don't say you're a Catholic. Oh. And there are in churches in the pulpits, I can tell you their name, they will hand you out the Baptist, who did I say the name of them? Daily Bread, no, yeah, Daily Bread. The Catholic devotional, Daily Devotional of Mary, 
and all the Catholic teachings of a perverted Bible they handed out to the people. They handed one to Stiley. Woo! How about this? Whatever, whatever church you go by, whatever you know, make sure you say a prayer for them. Oh Lord God, the flames be high and heavy. Not the people, the in the, the building. May the heads of the statues go kaboom. While I've been outside a Catholic church on Christmas Eve and watch the people of that church take the gospel tracts out of the people's hands and put it in the garbage. You want me to pray for them? Listen, I've had Catholic churches stop a regularly programmed thing because Stiley and his family showed up. Now we don't want them to come and bring literature against our church and for Jesus. We don't want that. You want me to pray for that? You want me to pray for the people that come knocking on the door and not Baptists? And that sell you their crap and their religion? You want me to pray for that? How about I pray for the for you, the Baptist, who can't keep your zipper closed? You know you know what Bible you're supposed to believe in. Pastor, what about feeding the sheep tonight? I'm out RVing. See the pretty pictures of the lake I'm sitting at? I'm sorry. We're going. That's false teachers and false prophets. They get up there and they teach wrong. And you know what the people don't do? They don't check the Bible out. They don't know what the Bible says. They don't even know what Bible. I have sat in Sunday schools. I have sat in preaching in many Baptist churches. I said many. Something was said. It was wrong. I'm sitting there like, anybody going to say something? Anybody going to raise their hand and say, that's sad. How about somebody will say, well, I listen to this person, that person is a woman preacher. That's a false teacher. Denies what the scriptures say. And I'm going to stop there because I just go more and more and more. We'll keep going. Ye shall know them, the false prophets, the false teacher, by their fruits. What is the outcome? What do they produce? Mega churches? Near rock and roll music? Perverted Bibles? False teaching itself? They got their eyes on things that you really should have my eyes on. You know, okay, now we got to build this. Now we got to build that. Now we need this. Now we need that. And. Proverbs said the fool has his eyes way off on the other side of the world. You've got artificial repentance, artificial salvation. People have grown up, they said a prayer, woohoo, they're saved. That's not Bible. They they get up there and, and Satan is in the front row. Amen. All right, preach it. All right, preach it. Jesus is in the back with the door closed. Don't let him in. Don't listen, Stiley. He's King James only, and he, he says this. That, that just we allow him, the pastor. We allowed you in our church. We accepted you. How dare you? Try to teach the people right.
That's truths and false prophets. There we go. I'm going to step my foot in it. Easter and Christmas celebration. Happy birthday to Jesus. That's fruits of somebody who does not know paganism. You ought to know pagan. You ought to know at least one thing. Halloween is not Christian. You want to know how many churches had it yesterday? All right, their church didn't have. You want to know how many Christians dressed up? The children? Even the Christians. Look at the fruit of the church and its members. When you got more show up for bowling night than soul winning, do men gather grapes? That grape is turned to a wine, which is a type of the blood of Jesus. Of thorns. Do you go up to a thorny bush? To get, no. Or do you grab figs from thistles or weed? No. You walk up to a grapevine, and, and like I said, where I live, we had they were sour grapes, but you knew the leaf and you knew what the cluster looked like. You, hey, that's a grape. I don't know about fig trees. We tried to grow one here, but I don't see it, so I did die. And yet these false prophets run around speaking. Somehow the Christians get grapes and figs from thorns and weeds. The result of the curse, Genesis 3. Even so, every good tree. Now here Jesus is likened men to tree. Can you picture, you know, oh, here comes that tree family in church. Are you going to take that literal? Trees have families, they have cells, they have limbs, they have fruit. So should Christians. So every good tree brings forth good fruit. What's good fruit? You try to witness. You try to get people saved. You try to pass out gospel. You, you try to pray. You try to read your Bible. You try to listen to good preaching. You try to have a, a good, whatever your position is, whether you're a wife or a husband in your house. Uh, if you're a child, you try to be a good child. You try to be good. Of and about Jesus, who is the good. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Look at your mega churches. That is an example of corrupt trees. Look at your Pentecostals. People say, Stella, you know, you've got to go to a Pentecostal church at least one. Uh-uh. I'm afraid something will jump on me and not jump ever back off. I've seen the video. It is just evil and wicked. How about a corrupt tree? How about a pastor that goes up to the podium, whether it be for preaching or Sunday school lecture or a Wednesday night service? How about he goes up there, he doesn't even have a Bible, and then he quotes from other Bibles? How about that one? Now, with that corruption, and I would say the corruption of the modern English Bible. 
What is the evil fruit of the corruption Bible? You say, well, look at, all right, it may have started off good, all right, let me say that. VBS may have started out right for God, for Jesus, children getting saved. I'm not going to say it wasn't. But my friend, my friend, my friend, if you can go down the street and see the Methodists, the Baptists, the Catholics having VBS, come on, you really think the kid's going to the Catholic? What? The Presbyterian? You really think the gay liberated and all that? I don't know what's walking through their doors. I know Jesus ain't. You walk into a church that says sodomy is okay, all are welcome, it's evil, according to the scriptures. What do you do with the church? There may, may, may be a good church. They say, you know what? We're not going to have Sunday night services no more. We'll give it a night off. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. There is no middle ground. God says you're either cold or you're hot. Well, what do you do with, with the lukewarm? You make God sick. You, you're a crab apple. And crab apple was an apple that made you sick. When I grew up, and I mean, my parents, we had, there was a pear tree. We learned don't eat the grapes, they're sour. We had raspberry bushes. We had our, my family's garden, everybody had a garden. Uh, we had apple trees in the neighborhood. And there were there were stuff there, my mom said, don't you eat that. The hedges we had had little red berries every summer or fall. And I was always warned by my, don't you eat that, but that's poison. That hedge is not a good tree because it produces poison. It may be beautiful, but beauty is vain, according to Proverbs 31. A woman that fears the Lord, she's the one, that's the one to be praised. Not the beauty. You may have a beautiful, great, wonderful looking church building, marble and all that, but so are mausoleums. Don't tell me, you know, we have the green lawn, we pay somebody to come to the lawn, and they manage the lawn, and, and, you know, we have somebody come and wash all the things, and vacuum, and make the church great and clean, and we got everything, you know, we sanitize everything, and... And you have where you go out Thursday night, and, you know, door knock, yeah. How many showed up? One. How many showed up for, we're going to have a work party Saturday? Oh, man, all your old people showed up. <laughs> Even my, my, my son-in-law, who doesn't go to church, he showed up and was helping us clean. Why? My wife, Lisa, and I, we had a church. They would have Sunday service, then they had their fellowship, and no church that evening. And we got sick of it because we'd be there. You would never like Lisa. She, she was like me. She, she, she tapped me on the shoulder one day we're, we're, we're at one of the fellowships. And she says, Hold on, i got to talk to you. I said, okay, what? She says, you know, I counted how many people were in church. What? You know you don't. No, she says, listen to me. Hold on. I, I didn't count for that reason. I counted the people in the church. Listen to me, hon. I said, okay. She says, you know, I counted how many people were at this fellowship. I'm like, Lisa, what are you doing? She said, there's more people that came for this fellowship than there were in church. I said, uh-huh. So my wife and I said, you know what? We're not going to fellowship no more. 
We'll go to church. We'll go to church services. We'll go to Bible. I go knock on doors. I, I go out. I'm not going to the fellowships. She says, okay. I said, we'll go get a pizza. We'll, we'll get the, the grill out. We'll go, you know, we, we did other things as husband and wife. When there was no church on Sunday night. Hey, that's right. But we weren't married yet. We were engaged. And we got called into the pastor's office, both Lisa and I. We're both saved. We're going to get married. Celebrate our wedding anniversary tomorrow. And he said to me, never call him bad, call him brother. He said, I'm not marrying you two. Why? What's the problem? You don't come to the fellowship. Oh, you mean we're not committing fornication, adultery? I didn't murder anybody? Our charge is we don't go to fellowship. Yeah, I didn't know the church charged me with false things. So we went to the fellowship just so we could get married. We got married November 2nd. It was a Saturday. Next day was Sunday. Sunday night after church, my wife and I had a honeymoon. We knew what was going to happen. Well, since it wasn't Halloween, they had a costume party. Take 31, 1, 2, 3. Well, three days after Halloween, they had a, but it wasn't Halloween. They had a costume party. I was told by the people who, who came to our wedding that the Sunday morning message was the very same message that the pastor had at our wedding. Word for word. And everybody came dressed up, whatever, and all that. We stopped going to that church for a long while. That church will, will soon break up, split. They went to another church. Oh, and they were written up in the newspaper. Oh, it's so good. We, we got a church with the, the original wooden pews. <laughs> and when my dad visited that church for my brother before he died, my dad, you know, they got great food there. What was the preaching on that? I don't know. They didn't try to witness to you? Huh? They didn't tell you about Jesus? No, but it was good food. Uh -huh. Thanks, Dad, for being an under undercover agent. By the way, the man that one of the men that was in that church was the man that witnessed to me, Joe Caswell. Ooh, I said a name. Joe Caswell was the one that led me to the Lord Jesus Christ, April 1987. All right now, I'm going to tell you all the times that Brother Joe helped Brother Stiley Grow in the Lord. Here we go. Ready? And when Stalin got on fire for the Lord and started preaching and started teaching himself, started going out, started evangelizing, and he'd be one of the ones, well, you know, he's crazy. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit and you will see they're trying to do good and in the eyes of God it's a failure you have got to recognize as a Christian what is good according to the Bible what is corrupt according to the Bible and not man and tradition every Baptist loves the Christmas and Easter celebration. Halloween, some of them. There are churches that will sell you jack-o'-lanterns. They'll fill the whole churchyard with jack-o'-lanterns. Well, you know, we're using the money for, you know, <laughs> we're taking something evil and using it, trying to do for the good. 
You recognize that? Every tree that brings forth not good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. I'm trying to put that on your, your church age. You mean every Christian that's not good goes to hell? I don't think so. That's not church age doctrine. Now, what good works of a Christian gets gold, silver, precious stones, and inheritance, what evil works of the Christian, of the flesh, wood, hay, and stubble, that burns, Paul says. That's how you can apply that to the Christian. A Christian's either going to get rewarded by his good works, or he's going to suffer loss by the evil fruits. But when Jesus is speaking, the person, if they're not doing good and don't have good fruits, you're going into hell. So according to Jesus, you will not in eternity find any false prophets, new heavens, new earth, or new, new Jerusalem. They've gone into hell. Now you can have false teachers in the church be saved and go to heaven. But they're going to walk around heaven bald with no crown. They'll be singing, lost the crown, lost the crown, lost the crown because I became a clown. So here we go, verse 20. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. And your typical Baptist in a typical Baptist church has it the foggiest idea because that pastor, that teacher, he is the greatest in the greatest church ever. And Jesus is... And you know why some churches won't allow Jesus in the door? Because once he comes to the door, he's going to start kicking everything over. 